The world had changed, society had changed, pop culture was going through cataclysms. Rules were being changed in large effect by the artists, by the power of artists like Bob Dylan, the Beatles, the Stones. Along came this new social force and music and uh, a way of presenting the music on the radio. And so there was FM. This is KMET, Metromedia Stereo, 94.7, Los Angeles. That's where it really took off, was in California. It's when they started making radios in cars with the FM above the AM on the dials. People went, wow, man, there's FM radio. Have you heard this station? It spread like wildfire. We were, in fact, the soundtrack of SoCal. We, we felt like what we were doing was really important, and we were also rebelling against AM radio that was just playing the hit singles. We were playing album tracks. That was really how you got your music out. There was no MTV, there were no iPods. People have a radio station. It's like this little corner of the universe that's theirs, and they feel connected, and that's their music, and that's their people, and that's my station, man. And it became like a secret language that we understood if you really listened. And that, to me, was freeform radio. Uh, the protests against the war. I was given the ability to go in to that room, and it was my church. It was one of the most chaotic places I had ever been in my life. It was like a circus. It was like a live acid trip. A hypo-crazed, drug-abused, <laughs> communist, faggot, hippie radio station. Uh, are you ready, Burner? Sure, I'll be here. I got my rod out. Mm-hmm, I can see that. We could do anything. We were fearless. And KMET quivers my, you know what. As the station got crazier, the ratings got better. I don't think any of us took ourselves seriously, but we took that work really seriously. The moment we had number one ratings, I saw it change. And somewhere around the late 70s, it became big business. Well, if the ratings are this good, it'll be even better if we regulate it. Money! So they tried to maximize what was already a golden goose. And they tried to come up with a formula that could emulate that and then go back to other markets and plug it into that city. It was branding, basically. So little by little, it was like, it was like the body snatchers. You're like, Steve, is that you or your pod? What made radio the, the personal kind of highly charged medium that really connected with its audience has been lost. Because it wasn't about the music anymore. It wasn't about connecting with people. It became all about entertainment and all about ratings. In the 1980s, radio was show business. In the 1990s, it was the entertainment business. In the 21st century, it's business. Today, we have one company that owns, what, 1,200 radio stations? Wow. 